and welcome to an introduction to Trimble Field Link. Today's presentation is to demonstrate the power of Trimble Field Link for set out for construction. My name is uh, Hugh James, I'm a sales consultant for Building Points Field Products. I specialize in Trimble Field Link layout, uh, especially around the construction arm. For the past three years, I've been working for Building Point. Uh, before that, I spent 10 years as a dimensional control surveyor. I worked on projects such as oil and gas construction, high-rise construction and remote locations work. My current role includes both includes sales and support and training of Trimble Field Link. So in my, my area covers um, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. Today's presentation will be split into four parts. Um, the first part will be an introduction into, this, into Trimble Field Link, what it is, what it does, where it's supposed to be used. Then we'll follow up with some practical presentations, some of both the software in use and uh, the hardware being utilized with that software. The third part will be a case study, and I will start highlighting some of the examples of where uh, the equipment has been successfully used. And our final section will be questions. So we will start with the introduction. And we're going to call this who, what, when and why. So originally who is, uh, was originally the trades, in particular the companies put installing air conditioning, uh, mechanical, plumbing and uh, the other trades. But due to the evolution of the software and the equipment, uh, all SAP facets of the construction industry can now benefit from Trimble Field Link. Its original purpose was to remove the difficult parts of surveying so that trades can get a easy to use software that allows them to do what they need to do, but no more and no less. So based, by, based on this, this is not really equipment that is designed for use by construction surveyors, nor is it there to replace them, as there are tools that a surveyor will use in his setup that won't be inside Trimble Field Link. Next section, the what. So Trimble Field Link is um, a multi-equipment platform. This means that we can use different machines to achieve different results, but using the same software. So a single person can be trained on the software and they can use multiple, diff multiple different devices to achieve their success. So our first machine is our entry level machine. It's called the RPT600. This is a simple self-leveling machine and has the advantage of being uh, with a green laser set out. So this has been designed for your indoor trades, especially your high rise. Next is our RTS 673 and 773 total stations. These are like a standard Trimble S9 series. They're three second. They have been ruggedized for the field and they have a HPDR red laser. Uh, the difference between the 673 and the 773 is that one has Trimble Vision and one doesn't. Next device is the Trimble RTS873. So this is a camera-driven total station with a, what is called a switchable high-precision green laser. So this means that it has a very small pinpoint green laser that can be turned on for working at distances when the red laser may not be suitable. Trimble Field Link can also be paired with uh, an SPS 986 GPS receiver. So the same software can then be used over an expanded area. Finally, because it is a unique software, uh, the Trimble, can, Trimble Field Link can also be paired with the Trimble X7 and can be used with, for scanning of buildings to create point clouds. 
if you'd like some further information about that, I do recommend you watch the video introducing the Trimble X7 and Trimble Field Points that was run by Fraser Wright uh, uh, earlier this week. So when would Trimble Field Link be used? Okay, because it has flexibility at the core of what it does, Trimble Field Link can be used in lots of different ways. So we aim it at the construction area after a surveyor has been and set up his project. So what we'd be hoping for Trimble Field Link to be used as for setting out hangers by the trades. Uh, penetrations can be marked on a deck before the concrete slab is poured. Uh, internal walls very is a very high use um, project uh, because you get lots of points to mark out and we're getting more and more complex curved walls that can be simply marked out using the laser. The device can also be used for marking out the footings of new builds holding out bolts, but also it can be used not just for setting out, but collecting data. This is very handy for QAQC and the checking of floor levels, which should both allow project managers and junior project managers to check things as they go. So this leads us to the why. Trimble Field Link just drives a total station, why not just use Trimble Access? So the answer is the visual layout. Because the laser has been automatically adjusts to the correct X, Y location on the, any floor or any ceiling, there aren't the micro adjustments that a surveyor normally does, which means that it can be handed over to less um, trained users uh, without you having to worry about them uh, marking into the right place. The answer is speed of learning. Most users can use this, can be taught how to use this equipment independently after one and a half days worth of training and become highly proficient after a month. The answer is product focus. So Trimble Field Link has been designed for the building construction industry, therefore it does do what the customers need it to do and nothing else. That means that there's no clutter on the screen and it becomes faster and easier to use. And finally, versatility. As shown in the pre previously, there are lots of different devices that can be hooked up to Trimble Field Link, which means that the user can pick the correct device to suit the task at hand. So now what we're going to do is get into some of the uh, practical uh, videos that we've got um, showing you what Trimble Field Link can do. So our first one is going to be about some of the tools and uh, extra little bits and pieces that you can do with Trimble Field Link to make your project more efficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this uh, by showing you what as drawings we can use with Trimble Field Link. So I've opened up a clean job and now I'm going to import some models. So as you can see, this is going to give you an idea of all the different types of drawings and models that we can get into our into Trimble Field Link. So here we have a 2D DXF plan. We have a 2D DWG plan a 3D SketchUp model, a 3D DWG model, an IFC. We can also import CSVs and finally PDFs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how it can actually take multiple different types of models and merge them together. So I'm going to start on my DXF and I'm going to select it here. As you can see, nice and orange. Hit the import button down at the bottom. It's going to import our model. Then we're going to select our DWG. And finally, our IFC. Once all three of these have been imported, I can go up to my more menu here 
select map. And here we have all three models merged together. If I click on this zipper here, we have our standard view tools and we can turn it into perspective mode and 3D orbit round our model. Zoom in and zoom out. So one thing we do have with Trimble Fiddlink is full layer control. By opening up the zipper, I can select my layers. And if I want to turn part of one of the models off, I just simply click and now our roof has been taken out and we can see the insides of our building. We've got our tracks, our pipes and our units. If I reopen the zipper, I can select this button here and that's going to allow me to turn off each of those three individual models. So I can turn off my 2D layout, turn off my 3D structural model and turn on and off my, th my 2D, my 3D IFC. Then I can close that back up. And again, I've got my model that I can see and view. What we have is now the perfect merge between 2D and 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump back into my top view. And I'm going to show you how we're going to create points directly from our model in the field. So I'm going to go up to my next steps. I'm going to go up to my create menu at the top. Like so. Select from model. And now I'm going to, again, I'm going to utilize my uh, layering tool. And I'm going to select directly from my drawing, my grid lines. As you can see, it's highlighted the grids in the drawing and also on the side, the layer that I want to turn on and off. So now with a double tap, I can isolate that layer and just the items on that layer have been created. I can click on the intersections. I could also have picked on endpoints, midpoints or the centers of circles. Hit this pencil and paper edit button and actually create a layer live in the field for my set out points. So in this case, I'm going to be creating my grid intersections. So I'm going to type in grid intersections, grid points into my drawing. Select the lasso tool and it's created every intersection point. It's found them. I have these blue points that are going to let me check before I actually create. And now every intersection has got what we call a set out point created ready for the field. Now, if I tap on this eye, you can see I can click on each of these points and it's going to have its own X, Y, Z coordinates, as well as showing what the layer that, that they're on. This is important because when we lay it out, the true 3D coordinates of the point that we've laid out will be recorded and we can have a comparison of those two points, either as a report or in pointed back into Trimble Field Link. So one thing I was going to quickly show you is here, my grid layer points layer has been created with these three dots. This means that it is a set, it's file with points in it rather than Our def points at the top here, which has got uh, these squares. So the difference between the squares are the squares represent background information, whereas points represent set out points. So again, I'm just going to flip myself into my perspective mode by selecting here. And you can see my points have been created in 3D on my model. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn you turn it into my layout mode. I'm going to show you how that information would then be utilized. 
simply all we have to do is click on one of those points, those white dots, and our machine will actually turn and move or guide us into our location if we were using the prism. So the clever thing about Trimble Fill Link, you don't just have to have the set out points, you can select your lines directly from your model. And with the tap of this, I can add an offset, but in this case, I'm not going to. And we can decide on how often a point appears along that line. So I'm going to change that to one meter, like so. And now all I have to do is simply select directly from my model or my drawing, and it's created a, a blue line with individual points directly on our, our line, each at one meter. So if I want to then start laying out, all I have to do is click on one point at the start. It will lay that point out and then with it, it will just keep on tracking down the line until we've laid out all those points. As I mentioned previously, we can add an offset. So as you can see, our points are now offset off our line by 200 mils. This is if we don't, if we want to be able to give our points some room. We can either have it on one side, on both sides, or on the other side. So with a simple click of a button, we can move it from side to side, like so. As you can see, that becomes start to show you the versatility and flexibility of Trimble Field Link in the field. What we can actually do now is we can do exactly the same thing what we did with the line with our curve. So we can either select a curve or a circle. So if I zoom in on one of my circles, you can see here I've got an interval of 100 mils with a zero offset. So I'm going to zoom in, click on the circle, and as you can see, a series of points have been created around the edge of the, the line of the circle. And then all I have to do is select my start point And my laser will start to lay out that circle in perfect 3D. So pretty much any geometric shape can be laid out with the machine. And it's just a simple case of deciding on whether or not we want to laser in or if we want to use the pole and prism set out because it could layout can be done with either. So now I'm just going to clear, clear that out and I'm going to jump into another tool, which is very key. With Trimble Field Lake Office, we can actually select and rotate models and bring them in, even if they haven't actually been placed on the right coordinates. So if I return to my import and select my PDF, you can see here it's going to allow me, if I already have the scale of the drawing, I can actually input that and I can actually type in off the list or I can add a custom. In this case, we didn't actually get given the scale factor so I've left it at one to one and I simply hit import. And now I'm going to return up to my Mac and you can see my PDF has come in down the bottom here, whereas my main model is at the top. So our first job will be to move it. But also, as you can see, because our pipes are here running uh, north south, I need to check those to see whether or not they are in the right location and rotation. So again, I'm just going to use my layer tool and I'm going to turn off my roof. We can see that the pipes that we're targeting are actually running east west. So those east west pipes, we will want to have our PDF rotated so that they match up. So now what we need to do is check the scale factor and we can do that by selecting two known points on one drawing and compare them to the measurement of the same points inside our other drawing. As you can see, we have an inbuilt measuring tool. And now our first step will be to open the zipper, 
select the model that we want to move, which will be slab and grid, hit the edit button. And now we can actually pick the model up and move it closer so that we can see our perspective. One thing I want to draw your attention to is that our model that we want to move is highlighted in one color and our main model stays in another. So if I select my edit button, I can import input my scale factor and I got that by dividing my two sets of grid distances. So that was 1.67 in this case. And I'm going to need to rotate my model by 90 degrees. So I'm going to leave that as it is. But if I wish to, I could change it. So now this leaves us with a simple procedure of hitting scale to make it the correct size and just tapping one of these rotation buttons. And we can make the model rotate around 90 degrees. So now we have our drawing on the right orientation and the right size. We just need to have it in the correct position. So if I tap on this button here, I can pick the point of displacement. So I'm going to pick one of my grid intersections. And because we have a snap tool, it's going to go straight onto the intersection. Then all I need to do is pick my whole model up based on that point of movement take it to the same location in the model. And as you can see, the two points are perfectly overlain. So now my model has been scaled, rotated and moved so that it is in the correct location for our site drawings and our site plans. So that's going to take us to a point where we can now export that and send that to the field via Trimble Connect if we wished because it's inbuilt into the tablet, or we can go to our export and we can export by simply tapping. We can add it onto our desktop, send it through to Trimble Connect here, through the desktop, or finally through the memory stick. As you can see, it's all done on pictograms. And that is how we would successfully prep a model for the field before we went out to uh, do any work. So that's going to conclude the first um, video that's going to talk about data preparation. Now we want to move on to a second video which is going to show you how the equipment works when it's being utilized in the field. So what we're going to utilize today is Trimble's uh, software they call uh, Virtual Layout. This allows us to run a field link program whilst controlling a virtual construction site. Uh, so our Trimble field link is on the left and our virtual construction site is on the right. Sorry, on the left is Trimble field link. On the right is our virtual construction site. So if I just start this video, you can see we've got the split screen. Uh, on our right, we have our total station and we have our worker who's going to be doing our set out for us today. So this has all been set up. I would like to apologize to people right now. This is an American program, so it is unfortunately locked to um, feet and inches. So as you can see on my left hand side, I've got my device connected already. It's telling me how much power and you can see the little pictogram is a picture of a total station. If I have my RPT or my um, connected, it would be a picture of an RPT. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple setup. And this is a case of picking two points on my drawing and then picking a point on my drawing, measuring it, picking a second and then allowing the unit to uh, set itself up. On our left hand side, you can see the prism is spinning. So that means that we don't have a lock. So I'm going to move my total station round using Trimble Vision. So it's pointing roughly at the prism. And now you can see that on our left hand side, our prism has stopped moving. This means that we have a successful lock. 
So now I can select my first point on my drawing and my worker can move over to that location like so. And as you can see, this is why we do need our surveyors because they've left some grid intercept, some grid pins for us to set up on. So once we're happy with our setup location, we simply go star and it's going to measure our point. Now we select our second setup point off our drawing and the computer is going to tell us how far that should be and gives us our computed distance. We're going to send our guy, our worker over to that second point. As you can see, there's a red stripe there showing that we still have a lock onto the prism and that is the line of sight as the machine moves round. So now we go on to our second point, like so. And once again, once we're happy with our location, we hit the star button and it's going to calculate out through our location. So in this case, our instrument is within uh, 0.007 of a foot. That is about three millimeters. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to hit set. And now our machine is ready to lay out. And that process, again, is just a very, very simple one. As you can see, I've pre-prepared some points. So now I'm going to hit on my measure at the top, go down to layout, and now simply select one of those points on the floor, like so. And our machine and our field link is going to tell us where our bloke has our worker has to work. So you can see there it's telling him to go forward, right, and up. So all these instructions are based on as if our man is looking directly at the total station. So we'll rotate our view. And as you can see on our screen, we can have a green dot that's showing where the prism currently is on our drawing and our total station. Now that we've got within our one meter, we can do our small micro adjustments. And I'm just going to keep on nudging myself into position until we get to a point where we're happy that we're within our tolerances for this particular project. So now with the next nudge, you can see we have a green screen. That means that we are now within the tolerances required and we can lay out our point. Once we're happy, we can hit the star button and it's been recorded. As you can see, we get green across our screen and our point has been changed from a white empty dot to a green dot with a tick. So we can lay out each point with a pole if we wish, or with a tap of the prism button, we can turn it into laser mode. This then speeds ourselves up and we can tap on any of those points. And as you can see, the red laser turns, moves into location, it will do its height adjustment. And as you can see on the left hand side there, we had a 19.19 foot height error, but we are correct to the right location. So now all our work would have to do is follow the laser, walk over to it and mark it as a point ready for layout. Again, he's going to hit the store button down the bottom so that he knows that he's marked that point out and the device doesn't go back to one of those points. As you can see down the bottom, if we've used Trimble field points, we can add information that can be included into the layout. So the guys can put this information down onto the floor. So for example, telling them that it is a box point, etc. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the line tool. If we select this grid line here, and again, you can see we have all our points set out and we're having an interval of every, th every three foot. So now I have to do is select one of those blue dots, like so. And our, tab our total station is going to now turn and move to that location. So it's there laying out directly onto the line 
ready for us to walk onto. We can hit store. And as you can see, it's offset at zero. And it's telling us how far down that line we are. It's also giving us a height error of 0 0.030 foot. OK, so it will change that automatically. Now, uh, one of the great things about the Trimble Field Link uh, visual layout is it means that it can be used to lay out between the floor or the roof off a 2D plan. So if we want to lay that point now out onto the roof, it is also a simple process. So I select on my roof to floor. It's going to ask me to measure the roof one time. And that just is a simple process of turning the total station so it just points up at the roof in any location. So I can do this manually or I can do this with um, my Trimble Vision. And once it's stored the theoretical location of the approximate operation of the roof, it hits aim. And now the total station moves and actually lays our point plumb up in the roof. So now we have a point that's in the roof plumb as well as in the floor. We can store that or if we want to, we can check it and we can move it back between the floor and the roof with a simple tap of a button. Like so, and you'll see it will do its adjustment, settle into position. So now once I'm happy and I've stored that point, to move on to the next point, all I have to do is tap on this arrow and the laser is going to move automatically to the next closest point. It will do its calculation of its height change and set. Now, all I have to do if I want to move that onto the roof is click on the up and then aim. As you can see, there's no need to remeasure the roof. It's remembered it from its last time. So now it's switched its point onto its roof. And I can actually hit store. And that 3D location of the height of the roof is going to be stored inside our, our machine ready for export. And then with a the tap, we can move along the roof line. So I don't have to go and floor, go keep on returning back to the floor. I can choose then to go back to the floor in any time I want. So as you can see, we can easily flip between roof and floor without any problems. And we can lay out a line. So the next tool we're going to show you is going to be the curve. So as you can see, I've added a curve into my drawing here. And I'm just going to select, select our curve tool, select our line. And once again, we have points going around the arc every three foot. So now all I want to do is tap on one of those points. Total station is going to turn and move onto that curve. So you can see the laser is pointing to our arc point that we selected. Sorry about that. You can see it's set onto the arc. Once I'm happy with that location and I've marked it, even though this is a ridged floor, it is capable of adjusting. I hit my store. And then my next. And as you can see, my total station has moved around my arc like so. So now I just let it finish settling because of the ridged floor. I'm happy. And as you can see, it's moved around the arc on my drawing. So once I've hit store, I pick next. And as you can see, it's going to jump over the point that I've already marked out. So it won't go back to a point once it's been marked out and stored. So there'll be no chance of having to keep on going back and forth, back and forth. If I want to, I can actually override the curve and pick any point I wish. Decide that three foot is too far, too close together. I'm going to do further apart. <clears throat> and once again, I can just hit store. That point has been marked out and it's going to go into my QAQC document. So as well as being able to mark points out, we can also collect information. So we can either use our pole and prism or our laser. So I'm going to stick in my laser mode for the moment. And as you can see, we have a lift core behind us. So if I close out of my collect tool, my 
layout tool and go into my collect tool like so i can now turn my machine and collect items first thing we want to do is we want to uh, create a layer so i can call it as built and i can give it any the point any name i want so in this case i picked t10 uh, because I'm picking up a lift core, I will just move it round to the lift core. I want to know its position in its uh, east-west. So I'll just pick a line. And then it's just a simple case of pressing star. And it's going to record that point. So now I just want to drive it round using the vision or again inside the total station to another point and hit star. And as you can see, this white line has been added onto my CAD plan. This tells me the true location of my uh, lift core for my as-built purposes. So we can do an as-built with the laser, or if I turn it around back towards my worker, and push it up onto the prism. What this allows us to do is lock back onto the prism and our worker can actually walk over to the item he wants to measure and measure in the next item. So as we saw previously, there was a little apron on the lift core. So he's going to go over to that apron, right onto the edge, put his pole onto the edge, keeping it level. Once he's happy with his position, we can click the star button and it records the point. And he can walk down the apron and the total station will follow him. And now he hits the star again. And that edge of apron has been recorded. So as you can see, the apron is slightly offline and on a slight curve, but should be in tolerance. So that's pretty much going to conclude our practical presentations of Trimble Field Link. Hopefully that's given you an idea of its flexibility. Um, we don't just have to collect lines, we can collect points and curves as well. So now we've completed through our present our ideas of how it works, we're going to show you where it works. So we've got five case studies of where Trimble has been successfully integrated into different parts of the construction industry here in Australia. So the first one is the Trimble RPT was is being used by a high rise plumber. So the reason that they wanted it, they looked at it originally is that they wanted to reduce the number of people required to set out and they wanted to also increase the speed of their set out. It was currently taking them two days with two men to set out a floor on a project. They managed to reduce that down to one man doing it in half a day. Secondary benefit for them meant that because they knew that um, there are points were going in correctly, they could work east to west across the building, meaning that items could be installed whilst set out was still going on. I mean, they didn't have to work in their standard um, way. They didn't have to work. <clears throat> Uh, wait till all their mains were installed before they started installing their sprinklers. This reduced their standing time and increased their overall efficiency. Because of this, preferential access was given by the builders who want to get the benefits of the technology onto their site, allowing them to meet their tighter timetables. So by giving them a little bit of extra time at the start, they saved a whole bunch of time as they went on. Because of these cost savings, they're able to target major blue ribbon projects that they previously hadn't thought about being able to do. <clears throat> Again, this is another use case for the Trimble RPT. 
this was purchased by a set of uh, residential building inspectors. What they wanted to do was they wanted to digitize their process. This has been the same for years and years to give themselves a competitive edge in the marketplace. As a direct benefit of, but of having this system, they were able to win an exclusive contract with one of the mass tier, one of the tier one mass builders here in Victoria. Uh, as the builder gets the benefit of digital reports quicker, which are more accurate, and they can provide information that they would previously not have got. So these particular inspectors were able to load SketchUp directly into their T10 tablets. And that means that the draft, the data can be moved into the drafting program and a report can be created whilst they're sitting in their trucks on site. So that's meant to a more efficient workday without them having to go home and then spend the evening prepping all their data. As a side thing, they have been used now by the concreters to do extra QA, QC checks on the flatness of the slab and mark out any places where there is an inordinate amount of uh, cutting or filling to be done. So all that's done in the same visit, which means that one visit now pays itself twice over. Next machine is the Trimble RTS 873. So this was purchased by a rigger and crane operator who wanted to reduce his standing time on projects uh, that they were not being compensated for. This is while he waited for surveyors to arrive, waited for scissor lifts to become free or for the area that he wanted to work in to be cleared out because he needed large areas previously to pull tapes across flat walls. Obviously, he needed a very large clear area and he needed to free up two scissor lifts, which was time consuming. Secondary benefit of this was that 90% of his work come from a single fabricator. Because his results of his set out were being fed directly back into Tecla, it meant all the cut sizes were correct first time for the fabricator which meant the fabricator reduced its rework and it secured a pipeline of work with that fabricator for the crane and rigging operator. Both uh, the crane operator and the owner are colorblind, so they didn't want to use red lasers because they couldn't see it in the sun. And the RTS873 gave them that high precision ability that they could see without having to do much messing about. Because you can change the intensity on the um, RTS 873's laser, it means that you can lay out onto virtually any surface uh, by changing the intensity to always make sure you're getting a good return. So that's given them a lot of confidence that they can go to site and do the layout that they want to do. Our next uh, case study is for the Trimble 773. So this was purchased for a um, remote location job. Um, it was a blue ribbon job in a remote location in Queensland. And basically their problem was that they wanted to set out, but they didn't want to have a sub hire a surveyor and have him permanently flying in and out. So they purchased the 773 to hand over to their excavator operators and their leading hands so they could do the mark out and set out themselves. So as the project progressed, the uh, crew got more and more confidence dealing with their set out and this let them set out items that had not been originally budgeted, that had been originally budgeted for specialist set out and they could take that on themselves. These include the feature cutouts, such as the concrete gull wings that you can see in the picture. Because of the uh, blue ribbon nature of this, there were a lot of these very strange shaped walls and curves in the design, which the guys could simply take off the drawing interface and they didn't get overwhelmed by this design. So this was able to make them feel more comfortable and happier. Because of the successful use of the RTS, 
they were more encouraged to open doors to other equipment, such as scanners and drones, which they now both use. Finally, we've got our Trimble uh, 673. So the users on this are junior project managers and project coordinators. So the original reason for this purchase was they wanted to do QA, QC checks on the subcontractor's work and spot verifications of the build as it went on. So uh, as they progressed, um, they found that every so often the subbies needed a point putting out, um, but that was signed up because they were having to wait for a surveyor. So with this device on site, they could quickly jump out, set the point out for the subby, so it didn't give them an excuse to stop working, send guys away from site. This meant that the project kept moving at its high pace. Because more and more projects have benefited from uh, the, the equipment use um, inside the firm, uh, they have embedded it into their entire workflow. This means that as uh, the users progress inside the structure of the company uh, to more senior work, they were able to then train their replacements without any fuss. So the chain have never got broken because they have their own workflow and they were able just to pass that workflow on through the line without any problems. So they've actually gone through five or six different users, whereas, and they've still kept that same original users still working inside the company. So they've just progressed up through the ranks, but the RTS has just been passed from user to user. So because the RTS can use multiple different types of files, it's meant that the same device that they purchased um, has been able to evolve with construction. And as especially as they've moved from AutoCAD into the Revit field, the RTS has been able to keep up with that. And so has Trimble Field Link. So it never became a defunct old item or one that they couldn't utilize. So that concludes our presentation for today. Uh, if you've got any questions about the software, the hardware, please feel free to uh, give me a call on my mobile or send me an email on at hughjames at buildingpoint.com.au. We also have a central phone number, which is 1-800-900-BPA that you can call. And if you can't get hold of me, one of the other guys in our national network can help you. Uh, finally, I want to finish this off by saying thank you for your time and attention. And hopefully I get to I will speak to you personally some point in the future. Many thanks.